Stream and Steam, Barn Oswick and the Lancashire Textile Industry. Barn Oswick was originally a Yorkshire town until boundary changes in the 1970s saw it become part of Pendle in Lancashire. The town was caught up in the Industrial Revolution and the unstoppable development of the Lancashire cotton industry. The towns of North East Lancashire, Blackburn, Clitheroe, Burnley, Nelson and Cone were also part of this textile revolution. Manchester was at its heart, the North West supplying, during the 19th century, almost all the world's cotton goods. Towns such as Oldham and Bolton specialised in cotton spinning, and others, especially in North East Lancashire, specialised in the weaving of coloured goods. Huge numbers of people were employed in the mills and weaving sheds, a way of life that has long since disappeared. Barn Oswick was very much out on a limb, right on the very edge of the Lancashire cotton trade area, specialising not so much in high-quality coloured goods, but in shirting and grey cloth, a plain cloth which went straight from the loom to be bleached or printed in one of the many bleach works and print works in the region. Bancroft Cotton Mill in Gillian's Lane, Barn Oswick, was a late arrival, being built in 1920, surviving until as late as 1978. Unfortunately, the weaving shed and other buildings were demolished, but the mill engine and the engine house have survived and are open to visitors most weekends. Um, it's in somewhat of a, uh, a dip in, between the hills, so we've got quite a tall chimney. Uh, it's 120 feet high, and it's, uh, it's very necessary to get the necessary draft on the, on the boilers. So the boiler produces the steam, the steam goes into the engine, and then it goes into cylinders or, or pistons. It's a cross-compound engine, I should say, where the steam is used twice, first in the high-pressure cylinder and then in the low-pressure cylinder. And those cylinders are named Mary Jane and James. And that was the name of the mill owners, and the, the chap who actually built the, the mill was James Nutter and his wife was Mary Jane. That was quite a common practice. Uh, cylinders of engines were named after uh, family members quite often. Originally, of course, the, the engine ran um, by means of ropes initially and then by bevel gears. All the shafting which this turned is, the... This is transmission from the engine into the... Into weaving the shed. weaving shed itself, yeah, and ran all the looms. It also ran a big generator to produce power and light. Um, and some of the power was actually used to light some local houses as well. Kissing the shuttle was common practice in weaving sheds. It involved sucking the cotton from the cop in the centre of the shuttle through a narrow hole before weaving could continue. There were many cases of rotten teeth and cancer of the mouth and throat before self-threading shuttles were introduced. Hilder Ellsworth well recalls kissing shuttles being used at Bancroft Mill. Was it yeah, there yeah. when you were, went in at first? Oh yeah, so they were all there. So how did it work? Like? How did the kissing shuttle actually work? Yeah, you had to wet through, hadn't you? You put your cup on, shut it mm. up, mm. and then you went like that and sucked thread through sucked a little it, eye. Sucked it into your mouth? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can remember from my childhood uh, weavers coming from the mill and they were always covered in cotton. Mm. Was it like that when you were? Yeah, no, yeah. fluff in your hair. And all the lamps and the, yeah. the line shafting just covered. But when cotton. I went at this, they were gas, the gas thing. That were dangerous because they were all fluff on them gas lamps. If that had caught fire, all the place had gone up. It's just like snow. Yeah. The noise in the weaving shed was deafening. It was almost impossible to speak over the din. In fact, many weavers suffered deafness later in life as a result of working in a weaving shed. Not only did weavers lip read, they also used signs and signals. In one weaving shed, the manager's surname was Redhead, and as soon as he entered the weaving shed, the weaver nearest to the door would point to the top of her head, and within seconds, everyone in the weaving shed knew the manager was about. What do weavers wear? Yeah, just no. ordinary clothes, but a cross over overall, and then you had what they called a fent. You had a piece of cotton and you pinned it around with you. Right you pinned it back so that it... Saved uh, sand rollers were like 
would pluck your clothes, you see. This is it were like, like tin sandpaper, if you will, <laughs> and roll of that hell your clothes. Mm. And if you were against that all the time, it were plucking. So that, that tent saved your clothes, you see. Well, nearly everybody wore a crossover overall. And what did you wear on your feet? Clogs. Clogs? Yeah, I wore clogs a long time. Did you ever see the shuttles break free? Yeah, many times. And what happened? Oh, well, one of my friends got it in Temple here, and she'd been learning to drive well after that. She was always off balance. And that mean I am, I've seen them flying out. It, uh, it was dangerous, I dodged them. But uh, my husband had a relation, it knocked her eye out. She had a glass eye.